Welcome to the new Haitian generation. On today's episode, we sit down with strategic storytelling expert Andy Henriquez. Mr. Henriquez coaches individuals and companies on how to unlock the power of stories to transform their lives and their businesses. Andy's experiences and accomplishments are diverse and vast, giving him a special ability to relate to all audiences. Let's now speak one-on-one -on -one with Andy Henriquez. Hi, my name is Andy Enriquez. I'm a strategic storytelling expert, which is really just a really fancy name for saying that I help companies and individuals to learn how to share their strategic story. I was born in Miami, Florida. My parents uh, originally came here from uh, Haiti. My mom uh, was born in uh, port au -Prince, Haiti, and my dad was actually born in Okai. Uh, they actually are some of the original business owners in what is known as Little Haiti today. Back in the day, my father had Henriquez Auto Parts, an auto service store, and my mom actually had a beauty salon, uh, which was uh, in Sabao Palm, which is uh, Sabo Palm is a, a plaza that still exists, I believe, till today in the Little Haiti area. Um, you know, I grew up in a household, even though I was sort of born here, uh, Haiti and and the, the, the Haiti and, and the culture was uh, very prominent uh, in our household. As a matter of fact, uh, my mom, when she would speak to me, she would often speak to me in Creole and actually actually require that I respond to her in Creole. So much so that when I finally started elementary school down in Miami, Florida at Norwood Elementary, uh, they thought I wasn't born in the United States because uh, apparently uh, English was my secondary language because we spoke so much Creole in the household. And I was blessed and fortunate enough that they had a Haitian professor that was uh, working there. Her name was uh, Mike Claire Bouvet. Um, and she was almost like my second mom. And she uh, really instilled in me the importance of hard work and commitment. And so I guess you would say I had a you know pretty uh, ordinary uh, childhood down in uh, Miami, Florida. Uh, did what most kids do, you know, hang out, have a good time. Uh, but definitely uh, my Haitian culture played a significant part in my upbringing as far as uh, the food, the family values, and spending the time and so forth. And, and my mom, she just always really, really emphasized uh, just the importance of knowing about the culture uh, and also not just knowing about the culture, but really uh, taking the culture on and being proud to be Haitian and making sure that when I get out there uh, that I make sure that other people know that I was Haitian and take pride in that. Mr. Henriquez explains how his Haitian identity was impacted while he was attending school as a child. So, you know, it was interesting uh, growing up and, uh, and, and going to school. And uh, a matter of fact, my first experience of school, of course, was Norwood Elementary down in Miami, Florida. Um, and you know what? I had a slightly different experience than my brother did. Uh, during his era, uh, you know, there was a, a a large stigma attached to uh, being a, a, a young Haitian American. Um, you know, I would find out that, you know, sometimes it was used as a bad word and kids would get into fights and so forth. Uh, I, I, I was very lucky and fortunate. Um, you know, I was, uh, had the ability to connect with a lot of the kids and in many cases expose many of the kids uh, to the, the Haitian culture. Uh, and so for me, it was actually uh, quite an experience for me as a Haitian uh, American growing up in, in elementary school. I, I I tell you one thing though that was funny was uh, you know I I didn't really know many words so for me uh, when I started off elementary school uh, the only real um, American word even though I was born in the United States that I that I knew was the word so so I remember during my first week of school uh, the teacher would ask me a series of questions and they were going around the room and having the students sort of stand up and stood up and they said you know Andy you know repeat such such thing and I didn't fully understand so I said so and then the teacher would say well you know that's not very nice and I responded by saying so and she said well if you say that again you're gonna go have to see the principal and once again I said so uh, and that experience is actually what caused them uh, to call my mother in and they thought they were gonna have to put me in a special class because they thought that English uh, was not my primary language and they thought that perhaps I was born in Haiti uh, but they, they, they soon discovered that you know that there was a lot of uh, Creole being spoken in the household uh, and literally that's what connected me with who I refer to uh, till this day as my second mother who unfortunately has passed away uh, my Claire Bouvet uh, because she was the Haitian teacher at that that elementary school who sort of took me on 
Uh, and every day I would go to school, I would leave with her, she would help me with my schoolwork, uh, and she just taught me this ridiculous discipline. And, and, and from that point on, uh, when I went on to be a you know, straight A student, I, uh, the year I graduated high school in Broward County, I graduated with the highest GPA out of all the uh, African American males in all of uh, Broward County. Uh, and I would love to take credit for that, but I tell you, it was this, this amazing woman that I called my second mother that poured into me uh, during my elementary school years and really just taught me the importance of hard work, discipline, and just having so much patience <laughs> with me as, as we sat down and went through the schoolwork and just teaching me that, you know, about making sure that I give my absolute best in everything that I did. And it wasn't just about being average, uh, but it was about doing the absolute best of what I was capable of doing. Andy describes how he went from being a CPA to a professional speaker. You know, I've got an interesting story, interesting journey, you know. Uh, growing up in the, in the Haitian uh, Caribbean household, you know, one of the things that was really emphasized was the importance to go to school, get a good education, and then when you're done, find a good job. And so I did that. I went to Florida State University. I got my undergraduate degree in accounting. I got my master's degree in corporate accounting. A group of us studied like crazy to be able to pass the CPA exam. We did. And I landed a job in one of the largest professional service firms in the world, PricewaterhouseCoopers. And, and I tell you to this day, that is a phenomenal company. But let me tell you something, after about three and a half years of working there, I just started to come to the realization and, and really was having an internal conversation with myself that kept saying, Andy, there's just got to be more than this. And so even though it's a great company, there's something inside of me that said, you know what, it's great you're a CPA, you're with this great company, but something inside of you is saying that there's got to be more than this. And I got to be honest with you, for about a year and a half, I thought about taking a chance on myself. For about a year and a half, I thought about trying to become an entrepreneur, discovering what my passion was, and I was afraid. I just didn't do anything. And so finally in December of 2004, that was like a defining moment for me. Kevin Costner, in one of his movies, he said, when the defining moment comes, either you define the moment or the moment defines you. And so I decided to define the moment. I stepped out there in order to pursue my goals and my dreams. And I was at a personal development seminar, I'll never forget this. There was a gentleman that was standing in the front of the room and he was talking about following your passion. And he says that for those of you who don't know what your passion is yet, and I didn't know exactly what my passion was, um, he said, I want you to imagine for a moment. He said, imagine that in your bank account you had all the money that you ever needed. And he said, also, imagine for a moment that whatever fear you have, the fear of failure, the fear of rejection, the fear of things happening, that all that fear was taken away from you. He said, what would you do if you still had to wake up every single day and provide some type of service? And so I thought about it, and I was looking, and I said, oh, my goodness, I want to be the guy in the front of the room. And so that began the journey of me going to personal development events and seminars and, and just really learning the business of professional speaking and, and, and really diving in deep to the area of personal development. Eventually, I would cross paths and get mentorship for one of the top five speakers in the world, Mr. Les Brown, world-renowned motivational speakers, uh, has been literally deemed one of the top five speakers in the world, had the opportunity to train under him, and just really throughout the years, uh, now today, I, I'm grateful and I can say that I have the, the privilege and the honor to go into major corporations uh, and go into also nonprofit organizations and train uh, CEOs and executives executives and board members of nonprofit organizations as well as up and coming speakers and coaches on how to leverage their story. And so I mentioned earlier that my title is a strategic storytelling expert. Well, what that means is that I help corporations, nonprofit organizations, specifically board members, executives, as well as speakers and coaches to come up with their signature story so that when they get opportunities to get out there and talk about their business, talk about their nonprofit organization or even talk about having an opportunity to maybe do an interview like I'm doing right now that they can make sure that they incorporate their story because I'm a firm believer that the true way that you connect with people is through your story. I tell them all the time that the shortest distance between you and your audience, the shortest distance between you and your next customer is a well 
told story. And so that's what I do today. I mean, it's a crazy journey. It's crazy that they go from CPA. Now you're a professional speaker, a strategic storytelling expert. But it was just a matter of uh, being willing to take a risk uh, and answer what I believe was a calling on my life uh, to, to do that thing that I believe I was called to do, which is really uh, pour into people and inspire them uh, and help them to have a larger vision of themselves. Mr. Henriquez gives advice on what you have to do to become a professional speaker. So, so my advice to someone who wants to become a professional speaker uh, is to, number one, don't make it so complicated. I mean, realize this. One of my mentors told me this. You know, speakers speak. So if you want to become a professional speaker, just find as many opportunities as possible to start having opportunities to actually get out there and start speaking. Now, naturally, you should also take the time to work and develop your actual skill set. And so there's an amazing organization, which is an organization that's absolutely free. It's a nonprofit organization. It's called Toastmasters International. Uh, and most people who are listening in right now probably have heard of Toastmasters if they haven't. Uh, it's just an organization. And no matter where you are in the world, uh, most likely there is a branch of Toastmasters or a meeting close to you where you can go to their website, put in your uh, zip code and your area code, wherever you're at, uh, and you'll be able to find a meeting close to you. And basically, it's a safe environment that allows somebody who wants to uh, maybe overcome the fear of public speaking or maybe even wants to just develop uh, their public speaking abilities, it creates a safe environment for them to just go and practice speaking in front of an audience. And it gives them an opportunity to receive feedback in a very safe and comfortable environment. Now, that's a great start, but I would tell someone who wants to become a professional speaker that they've got to make sure that they invest in themselves, that they take the time to get the mentoring, that they take the time to get the coaching. Another thing that I tell my speakers that I work with and help train is that the best speakers are also the best listeners. Uh, and so for those who want to become great speakers, they want to take the time to make sure, especially in today's world with the internet, of making sure that they are listening to other great speakers. I mean, log on to YouTube, um, find some of the best speakers literally in the world and listen into them. Look at how they utilize stories. Look at how they connect with the audience. Look at their posture. Look at their energy level and so forth. And then lastly, I tell you this, is that you got to practice. I can tell you right now, I can remember when I first started off literally walking in my backyard, pacing back and forth and speaking to the trees in my backyard. I know this sounds crazy, but I would speak to the trees in my backyard and act as if the trees were my audience, right? I, I would ask them to respond. I would walk from one side to the other, acting as if that I was actually on the stage. And, and you won't believe how practicing prepared me so that when I actually finally got the opportunity to be on stage, it almost felt like I had been there before. So, so I hear many speakers sometimes say, well, I don't have opportunity to speak. Well, create your own opportunity. Go and close yourself in a bedroom, close yourself in the backyard, and get out there and start working on your stuff stuff because what we don't want to do is get in front of an audience and be practicing. You want to do the practice well before you ever get in front of an audience. So the main thing I would tell them is find opportunities to speak, look into possibly Toastmasters International, get into one of the meetings, practice, 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 and then keep seeking opportunities to speak and of course get mentoring and coaching, which is always going to be available out there. Andy talks about the National Haitian Student Alliance. So, so first of all, the, the National Haitian Student Alliance uh, is basically like the umbrella organization for all the uh, Haitian cultural clubs, for all the different colleges and universities throughout the United States and also in Canada. So every single year they have this uh, national conference and during that conference it gives these students an opportunity to sort of come together, connect, talk about the issues uh, for them as young Haitian Americans, also talk about many of the issues issues that are happening in Haiti and, and sort of getting them to take some uh, level of ownership and responsibility uh, as young Haitian Americans uh, for many of the issues that are taking place in Haiti and, and having dialogue with many of those issues. And, and so they've brought me in now for literally uh, it's four years I've been involved and I've come in to deliver their keynote message. Uh, this year I was one of the keynote speakers and they had another phenomenal Haitian descendant, um, a motivational speaker who came in as well. Um, and so I love the experience. Uh, delivering that keynote message because a couple of things. Number one, 
it gives me an opportunity to really uh, be able to give them hope and inspiration and sharing uh, my personal story, my personal journey, journey as a young uh, Haitian American and, and sort of uh, how I went from, you know, graduating college to being a CPA and then eventually becoming a motivational speaker, a strategic storytelling expert. Uh, so for many of them, I can sort of see how they're sitting there and, and you can tell that uh, I represent hope and I represent the possibilities for any of them that maybe perhaps have a dream uh, that's maybe outside of the regular traditional box or what they've sort of been instructed to do. And much of what I share with them is how I followed the path that I was instructed to do. But unfortunately came to the realization that, you know what, there's got to be more than this. And, and then eventually getting to the path of, of following my passion. But, but the amazing thing is for me, when I go there, not only uh, do I show up and, and maybe perhaps I have the opportunity to inspire literally hundreds of students, but they inspire me. And the reason why is because I'm looking at these uh, young students there in college and I'm looking at how engaged they are with the Haitian culture. I'm, 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 I'm listening in the hallway and I'm listening to these kids that are all fluent in English that are choosing by choice to actually speak in curl. I'm watching these kids walk by with their headphones in their ears and I take the headphone out of their ear and I put it in, put it in one of my ears and they're listening to Haitian music. And, I'm, and, 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 I, and then I'm engaged in dialogue with them and I'm listening how they know so much of, of the history and, and some of which even put me to shame and I'll be the first one to tell you that. I mean, and, and so what it, what it does for me, it just really paints this, this message of hope and it just lets me know uh, for these young Haitian Americans here uh, that they are going to make their mark. They're very confident. They know who they are. Uh, not only are they going to have massive success, but they're not going to have that success and leave their Haitian culture behind. They're going to be bringing on and bringing that Haitian culture with them. Uh, so, you know, every time I go to that conference, uh, even though they're all excited that I'm going to show up, I tell you, I'm just as excited uh, to see all of them because they really uh, give me hope and inspiration. Uh, and for me, it's really truly an honor to be able to spend that weekend with them uh, as I've done for the past couple of years. Andy's mother was his inspiration for writing his book, Show Up For Your Life. So one of the things I am just most excited about right now is the launch of my new book. Uh, the title of my book is Show Up For Your Life, Seven Principles to Living an Extraordinary Life. Uh, and really the title of the book was inspired by my mom's story. You know, one of my mom's stories is perhaps uh, one of the most inspiring stories that I know. My mom literally came to the United States with less than $150 to her name. And when my mom came here to this country, like many immigrants that come to the country, she was just seeking opportunities uh, to do anything that she could to be able to provide for myself and my brother, Ralph. And, you know, ultimately, after 20 something years of being in this country and, you know, struggling as an entrepreneur and getting different jobs, my mom found this commercial building in Delray Beach, Florida, uh, and she opened up this Haitian cuisine, this Haitian restaurant uh, with, you know, the great Haitian food. And so just as the people in the neighborhood started finding about her business and she had been in business for two years, she's breaking even, she's at home one day relaxing and she gets a knock on the door. Well, when she opens up the door, the gentleman at the other end hands her some legal documents only to discover that the property that my mom had been renting out, that the property was going to foreclosure. And my mom's in complete shock because she had paid the landlord rent every single month on time. And so my mom just decides, you know what, that she's going to show up to this foreclosure sale to see if she can plead and literally ask whoever buys the property if there's any way that she could stay in there and continue to run and operate her building. Well, to her surprise, she gets there and there's literally only one other person there to bid on the property. And so my mom takes the act of faith and she decides to raise her hand and she enters the bidding process, not knowing how it works, not knowing how she's gonna come up with the money. And believe it or not, my mom wins the bid. Now at the time, they gave you 30 days to come up with the money. My mom didn't have the money. She would call up every family member, every single friend that she could call. Eventually, she was like three days away, still short, but she gets all the money. And that day, my mom went from being the tenant to being the landlord. And the theme is all because she was willing to show up. And so the reason why I wrote the book is because I know that there's many people right now that they've got goals, they've got dreams, they've got something that they're pursuing, but they have something inside of them that's keeping them from showing up. And maybe it's the negative self 
talk. Maybe they're thinking to themselves that, you know, I don't have the resources or who am I to think that I could start the business or that I could get the degree or that I can uh, be able to do whatever this thing is that they have the desire to do. And so I just want to remind them that nothing happens until you're willing to actually show up. So throughout the book, I have my mom's story and other very powerful, inspiring stories, but I also have very powerful, compelling exercises that the reader can actually go through that really will put them in position to get past all the excuses, get past all the fears, and help them to understand that in spite of their circumstances, in in spite of the challenges that they at any moment can take control of their life if they're willing to show up regardless of what the circumstances are. And so it's my hope and dream that everyone's going to get their hands on this book, but most importantly that they're going to get inspired to show up for their lives, to show up for their goals, and to show up for their dreams just like my mom did. Haitian culture is the driving force that makes Mr. Henriquez succeed in life. So, so my Haitian culture, the influence it's had in my career uh, is really, number one, is just the drive. One of the things that uh, is so uh, evident and prominent in, in the Haitian culture, especially those that come here to the United States, is that they understand that, that there's opportunity here. Uh, and so they don't take that opportunity lightly. And, and, and I tell you one thing, it's not uncommon for you to see someone who comes here from Haiti that has absolutely nothing and for you to just track them and look for them in another five years and most likely they've already uh, have a, 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 a job that they've been working on consistently. Uh, they probably already went from renting a home to now they're probably already a homeowner. Uh, they are probably already instilling in their children the importance of going to school and getting a good education uh, and providing for their children. And so one of the things that I have uh, that, you know, people maybe uh, give me credit for, but it really just comes from the culture. It's the drive, the determination, uh, the resilience, uh, which is so prominent in the, the Haitian culture. I mean, as, as you know, that this is one of the first, the first black nation to claim uh, their independence. Uh, you know, the, the, we had something in us uh, that knew uh, that, you know, from, from inception that, you know, there's got to be more than this, that there's got, there's a level of independence in me uh, and I can break through whatever barrier. And it, as you also know, that Haiti itself has endured uh, a lot of hardship and probably uh, one of the ones that was probably uh, most visible uh, was when the, the, the actual earthquake happened. Uh, but I tell you, when I had the opportunity to go back and, and visit Haiti, post the earthquake, uh, what you see is, is resilience. What you see is people continue to push forward in spite of what has actually happened to them. And so I think it's just a part of who I am. And so it's the reason why, as an entrepreneur, I've been able to you know, endure uh, things that you have to go through as an entrepreneur. You know, Sometimes things don't always work out the way that you intended. Uh, sometimes uh, you're going to fall short. Uh, but I think it's a lot, a lot of it has to do with my culture. Uh, and, and the fact I, I'm very clear on who I am and that I'm Haitian descent and that we have this uh, don't quit attitude and we have the resilience and we have the, the willingness to keep pushing forward in spite of the circumstances, in spite of what anybody says, also being resourceful. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, Haitian people are perhaps some of the, the most resourceful uh, people out there. Uh, whatever it is that they have, they'll make do uh, and they'll find a way to, to duplicate it uh, and make it happen. So that's had a major influence. And then the other thing is, for me, it's, it's my signature story uh, that I have an opportunity to share all the time, which is that same story uh, about my mom that I referenced, the story uh, that really uh, gave birth uh, to my book and also gave birth to my tagline, which is show up for your life, because if you don't, nobody else will. Um, and also the name of my company, which is Show Up For Your Life, LLC. Um, I mean, that's what really truly gave birth uh, to the entire movement is my mom's compelling story. This Haitian woman who came to this country with less than $150 to her name, who was willing to show up in spite of the circumstances and just literally completely transform her life in a single moment that she was willing to show up. Uh, and so I think every single day, uh, my culture uh, and knowing where I came from uh, shows up in one way or another, whether it's just in a little teeny thing of being resilient, uh, whether it's uh, just feeling a sense of responsibility uh, to give back and to make the most of the opportunity that's available for me. Andy explains what it means to be Haitian in America today. 
So, so that's a, a very interesting question, right? When someone would say, well, what does it mean to be Haitian and American in America today? Uh, you know, I, I personally think it's one of those things that you take just great pride in. Um, I do know, I do know the history of it, however. I do know at, at one point, uh, you know, that there was unfortunately a stigma attached, uh, an, un, uh, in many ways unjustly so, uh, many times, uh, with, uh, with being Haitian. And I, and I think that probably one of the pioneers in starting to break that stigma uh, was through the platform of music uh, with a gentleman by the name of Wyclef Jean who started introducing the music and, and, and getting people uh, exposed to the Haitian culture uh, and, and also uh, debunking many of the things that the preconceived notions that the people had. Uh, but what I find now is that, you know, when you're listening uh, even to, uh, you know, modern music and so forth, you always hear people uh, referencing Haiti and giving shout outs to Haiti and so forth. Uh, you know, what you also find is how uh, people are always uh, prideful to say, you know, oh, I've got a Haitian friend or I'm going to Haiti with my friends. I find more and more now, I meet people who are not Haitian descent, uh, people uh, from all all walks of life who are always uh, uh, very uh, happy to tell me how they had an opportunity to go and visit Haiti and how amazing and beautiful Haiti was and how amazing uh, their actual experience was. So I think, you know, being ha Haitian in America, in America today is really something to be prideful about. Um, it, it's one of those things where, and you know, people also who take the time to learn the history understand that this means, you know, this is a resilient person. Uh, this is a person that comes from a strong lineage. Uh, this is a person that is most likely a very hard worker. Uh, this is a person that definitely is going to make the most out of every opportunity. Um, this this is a person that puts a lot of value on education, uh, on, on uh, career, on family. Uh, and so I think, you know, that there's never been a better time uh, to be a, a Haitian American. Um, I, and, you know, I've, I've even had people, you know, find ways to make associations. Well, you know, my cousin's cousin, cousin is half Haitian. So I guess I could sort of kind of say I'm Haitian. So you could see uh, that, that, that people have really embraced the culture. And we won't even reference the food, right? I mean, the food is absolutely amazing, 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 amazing. So regardless of where uh, anyone is from, once they taste the Haitian food, especially the Haitian rice, I know my wife is uh, originally from uh, Jamaica, and she absolutely loves the Haitian rice. I mean, just loves the, the Haitian rice. So the Haitian food, the culture, the music, uh, the grit, the determination, I don't think that there's a better time uh, to be a, a Haitian in America today. Mr. Henriquez would love for the people at home to contact him. So excellent. I would absolutely love to get in contact with uh, and be able to connect with many of the viewers out there. They can connect with me. And so one of the ways that they can do that is just simply go to my website. It's andyhenriquez.com. Once again, that is A-N-D-Y, last name Henriquez, H-E-N-R-I-Q-U-E-Z. Dot com. When they get there, they'll be able to find tons of resources. They'll be able to learn more about me, about what it is that I do, uh, and also be able to uh, get some amazing resources. Mm -hmm.